Good evening. This is the call to order for the workshop meeting for Tuesday, February 21st, 2023. We have a tobacco policy in place. There is no smoking within 100 feet of any school building. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Gates, can you please take roll call? Trustee Sherry. Present. Trustee Bishop. Trustee Story. Here. Trustee Wallace. Here. Trustee Raimondo. Trustee Hemingway Lynch. Here. Trustee Taylor. Here. Thank you. We would like to welcome the middle school principal, Mr. Dodonna, to uh, speak to the board. Thank you. Sorry, give you some ins and outs <coughs> of the middle school and talk a little bit about the process for bringing the sixth grade up um, in 24-25. Um, which we are very, very excited about as a staff. Um, this year's enrollment, seventh grade, we have 82 students. Uh, ninth, eighth grade, we have 92 students. That continues to grow in, uh, in drips and drabs. We're actually adding a couple more students this week. So the enrollment has uh, gone up little by little all year this year. I think we started, we were in the 70s with, with seventh grade and in the 80s with eighth grade. So, you know. 10, 10 to 14 students have added uh, this year. Um, as far as our enrollment do, uh, out of the 174 students, 41 students have IEPs, um, 14 students have 504s, uh, and we have one ELL student, English as a, a learning language. Um, we had quite a few students participate as usual in fall sports, 85, that's a great number. Uh, it's just about half the students, and in the winter, because there's less sports, we had about 43 basketball and so forth don't take as many students. So you can see, but we hope that will jump up in the spring um, when we add track and softball and, and baseball and all those good things, golf, which I'll get into in just a second. Um, we've had a great year academically. Uh, the kids are working really, really hard. The teachers are working extremely hard. Um, you see our uh, honor roll, which just came, our second marking period just came out. But 90% first marking period, typical, get the kids back into the swing of things for seventh grade. They ease them in. We start to uh, ramp up the rigor, second marking period, so you'll see. But still 70% of our students are on a honor roll in seventh grade. Um, those numbers are similar in eighth grade, where we have 75% and 67% in the second marking period. So. Those uh, are great numbers for a middle school. Um, you know, nobody falls through the cracks in the middle school. We know what every student's doing. We are giving individual attention to every single student, giving them what they need. Uh, we have a lot of great special ed teachers in our co-teaching model, and we are able to address uh, learning concerns, and we slowly get that as we move through the year. So one of the great things about this staff is their attention to detail their attention to the students on an individual basis. Uh, I can honestly say um, there are conversations constantly about students. We are always looking to help them. We're giving them second chances. Uh, we want them to be successful. We want them to feel successful when they get into the high school in ninth grade. That's the key to a successful high school is having that confidence that you can do the work if you put the effort in. And, and it's really a great thing. We do have homework help twice a week, Mondays and Wednesdays. Love to increase that next year. Right now it seems to be okay, but as we add another grade in 24-25, uh, we're gonna look to maybe expand that to one more day. Uh, so that's something we're looking, for, looking to, um, especially with the new staff that'll be coming in with them. 
So these are all the activities, and, and I know there's a lot of questions about what is the sixth grade going to do when they come up. Well, there's a lot to do. There are a lot of clubs that they can join. They are not allowed to play sports yet. That's the one area that New York State says it has to be a middle school student, has to be a seventh or eighth grade. Uh, we're hoping to add intramurals. Again, in the winter, it's a little tough because of the gym space, um, but definitely in the fall and the spring, we're going to look to add intramurals for the kids so that they have some sports to do after school. But as far as clubs, they will be allowed to join clubs. We have art club, battle of the books, coding, robotics, student government they'll be part of, um, Tufts with uh, Mrs. Grimm they'll be part of, yearbook. These are all clubs that sixth grade will be allowed to be a part of. So uh, when we talk about things to do after school, things for them to do between three and five, when parents get home, we have lots of things for them to do. Um, and we're going to look at the intramural side of that for them as well when they come up in 24, 25. But 7th and 8th grade, they'll be part of our drama club, our, straight, our Shakespeare, they'll have the opportunity to try out and be part of that and even be, be part of that behind the scenes if they don't get to initially get into that as far as the acting. But behind the scenes, there's plenty of work to do. So we are going to embrace them as soon as they come up with lots of different things to do. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the staff because there are a lot of shared staff, but we also have a lot of dedicated staff. Uh, middle school, dedicated middle school staff are our core classes, social studies, math, English, and science. Uh, right now, the eighth grade do go to a high school teacher for uh, earth science and algebra, those that are uh, on an advanced track. But other than that, every student has a core middle school student where they work together in a team. I'm not sure if you're aware, but those core 7th and 8th grade teachers meet once a week uh, uh, for a period every single week. They have an agenda. They report out to me. Um, I join them when they ask me to, but it's really a, a free-flowing type of meeting where they get to talk about ideas, things that they can do to improve. And again, talk about kids, talk about things, even though there are a lot of things to talk about making sure that everybody is, is accounted for and that we are meeting the kids' needs. Um, we have one phys ed teacher right now dedicated that does seventh and eighth. Uh, we have four special ed teachers that are dedicated to the middle school, and we have one home and careers teacher. Um, the shared staff is quite a bit with the high school. Um, the language teachers, three of them are shared, one French, two Spanish. Our art teachers, we have two. One, one of the art teachers does just the uh, advanced art, which is studio art. The other art teacher teaches all the seventh and eighth grade art and uh, does some high school classes. Uh, we have one tech teacher, which we share, although we have the majority of uh, Mr. Sanders. Three music teachers, orchestra, band, and chorus that we share. Um, the science teacher, as I spoke to, and the math teacher do the advanced classes. Uh, Mr. Rushford, our health teacher, also does health in the high school. Um, well, that gets done in eighth grade. We're looking to rotate the sixth grade in with a health class with Mr. Rushford when, when they come up. We have one ELL teacher and one, two reading teachers, but primarily one reading teacher that handles the middle school. Anyone, any questions? On, um, we also have other shared staff that we share as a building. Uh, we have four school counselors. Uh, each of the four school counselors has a section of the seventh and eighth grade students, generally by last name, by the last first letter of the last name. We have two social workers, two school psychologists um, who are always busy and are great helps to, to both the middle school and the high school. Um, they are fully attuned to the, to the kids' needs, and these people do a lot of work. They make sure that kids are safe and healthy, and it's really great to see how much work they put in. Um, our librarian, we have one librarian, and uh, she does a great job in there. And then various TAs, monitors that monitor the building, that uh, help with supervision, help with uh, individual student needs with IEPs. Um, so that we do have quite a bit of shared staff uh, in the middle school, high school. Um, and sixth grade, this has been priority. You know, we've had the world cafes, which have been great, eye-opening, and I think a lot of great questions came out of that a couple weeks ago. Looking forward to next week's uh, great mix of people that we were really able to uh, 
have great conversations. It was well set up, and the, the questions were very poignant and, and gave a lot of leeway to great conversations at the table, especially the one I was at, I can speak to. But overall, I thought it was great. Um, but on behind the scenes, what we're doing, I'm meeting with Mr. Bono regularly, speaking to Mr. Bono about the sixth grade regularly, what their curriculum looks like, what, what types of things they do in science, social studies, math, reading, ELA, so that we, when we do bring them up here, it's a smooth transition. Um, Ms. Laffin and I and Mr. Bono are meeting with the sixth grade teachers next week, um, next week or the week after. So we'll sit down with the sixth grade teachers and get their ideas. We really want this to be a group decision with everybody having, you know, being heard. So it's very important. Uh, middle school has been putting together questions. I'm meeting with the middle school staff on Tuesday. Talk about their questions, what they have, what they, you know, and, and a lot of it's quelling rumors, but a lot of it is hearing, you know, because I can't know all the questions. So it's great to really hear from everybody so there, everything gets thought about ahead of time. I uh, met with Kyle, Building and Grounds. We did a full middle school sweep and looked at all the classrooms, what changes are going to need to be made. Some will need to be repurposed. Some will have to be upgraded. So we're looking at all that, trying to get ahead. And it's really nice that it is a year and a half, almost a year and a half away and not this September. It would have, would have been a different presentation if it was in September. So I'm very happy that we have a year and a half to really do this thing right. Um, and then the administrative meetings that happen with, with the whole administrative team uh, that are happening on a, a weekly basis in our, uh, in our instructional cabinet. So there's a lot of talk. It's always a topic. And, and we're going to make sure we do it right. And we're going to make sure that it's a smooth transition. We're going to make sure in the fall we meet with parents, hear their concerns in the fall, get the, uh, any other questions that may come up, and that I'll go back and then address them again. So that's going to happen in the fall. There is a timeline. Um, we'll start looking at schedules, but a lot of that stuff needs to happen, you know, after we get through this year and start looking at next year at what staff we have, who will be coming up, and then we can start to decide about schedules and what exactly it will look like. So there's been no real hard decisions to make, just a lot of ideas that we're throwing out there so that everybody can take a look and question it and, and add, add what they think would be best. So we are excited. I'm very excited. And... Uh, I have experience bringing six, having a sixth grade in a middle school, so I know it is a little bit different. It's not quite the same as seventh and eighth. It's similar, but not quite the same. They typically uh, will do two, two full periods of an ELA in a sixth grade, where seventh and eighth grade it's typically one. Um, they don't do the elective, so to say, for the full semester or half semester. They typically do in 10 weeks, so we give them a lot of different experiences in their sixth grade. Um, so these are all things that are in the works that we'll have more information for you probably after the summer once we've, we've kind of narrowed it down and looked at our staff and what we can, what we can offer. So um, it's been great. It's been great. It's been a great team atmosphere. Everybody's working together. Um, it's been really enjoyable. My first six months have been fantastic. I work with a, just a fantastic staff in the middle school. I couldn't have gotten any luckier with the staff. So it's been a great transition in, and um, I've had a great year and it's been great to be here. Uh, I think that's all I have if anybody has any questions. Well, thank you Principal Dodonna. We're very happy to have you and I'm glad that the first six months have been fairly smooth um, and you do have a fantastic staff yeah. and uh, I think we're all really lucky to have them. Does anybody have questions for Principal Dodonna? Okay. Well, I think we're good on questions. That was very informative and helpful to us. Obviously, um, we're hoping to hear from you again as things progress because we're really interested in the process and making sure that the transition is as smooth as possible for the kids and the staff, but particularly the kids. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Ms. LeClaire, Assistant Superintendent, Monica.
Council of Claire is going to present the preliminary 23-24 budget forecast and tax levy limit. I think that's me. Sorry, no, that was you. <laughs> well, um, good evening, everyone. So as we move forward with the 23-24 budget, uh, we have uh, officially filed the tax cap, the tax levy limit. Um, so the tax levy limit has actually come in at um, a little over, I put my glasses on, uh, about three, a little over 3.8 percent. Um, and as you look at the um, calculation, um, it's due to our current year exemptions and then the available carryover that came from last year because we did not levy the full amount last year. Um, as you can see, I updated the tax rate versus tax levy slide. Um, as I mentioned in the last, at the last presentation, just because our tax levy is looking to be go up by 3.8%, our tax rate is looking to go up by between 2 percent 2.5%. Um, and as we say, um, the tax levy limit does align with the governor's property tax law. Um, so it is the formula that the governor had when he implemented this years ago that schools were to use and towns as well um, to uh, decide what to levy for, ta for property taxes. And this additional levy also would help accommodate um, coverage for some continued inflationary um, increases. Uh, we are still seeing um, inflation running at about 6 7%, though it has started to come down, fingers crossed. Um, looking at our projected revenues, um, again, slight change from the last time due to that uh, slight increase in tax levy. In addition, um, I did budget for higher um, interest income. Um, I'm sure you've all noticed that um, your savings accounts um, have get garnered a little more interest. Um, we hold roughly, I don't know, 20 million in cash. So our interest income's a little higher than what most people see in their household budget. So. Um, Again, understanding that past it's been about a quarter percent, now we're getting about four percent, so that's huge for us. Uh, so our uh, projected revenue at this point is about 58.8 million, uh, just shy of a 2.88 percent increase. As for projected expenses, whoop, did I miss one? Oh, I forgot there were on two slides. I was trying to save paper, I don't know why, the, I should have brought the presentation with the big slides, but. You got it in front of you, you can see it. So as for projected expenses, you can see that has also changed slightly. Our general support is actually going down, and I will explain how that happened um, in the next slide. Um, and in addition, our inner fund transfers has gone down a little bit. So draft two of our projected expenditures is uh, just shy of a 2.3% increase. And really the biggest change was I, um, uh, uh, so that, so uh, besides the increase in the tax levy limit, the increase in the income, income, uh, income interest income, hmm, uh, there's a reduction of the transfer to capital line because I am going to be recommending that we uh, do a proposition to utilize our capital reserve funds. So instead of the normal $750,000 transfer to capital, we're reducing that to $500,000. In addition, we're going to pay for the BOCES debt out of our unappropriated fund balance, since it's kind of a one, a one-time fee for the next couple of years, rather than making it part of our budget, I'm pulling it out of the budget, um, and we're going to be utilizing our unappropriated fund balance to pay for that. Uh, in addition, we did have some savings from the uh, retirements that we currently have, and then I did also use some of the um, ARP money, the American Rescue Plan money, to, to offset uh, current salaries. Um, but just as a reminder, that money does expire in September of 24, so that's going to be our last year using it. So that brings our, pro I did it again. So that brings our projected gap to um, just over 2.5 million. Um, and as you can see, for the current year, you were using about 2.7 million for appropriated fund balance, so we're actually in pretty good shape moving forward. So again, historically, I think I showed you this slide the last time as well, we've used, utilized between 2.7 and 3.2 million for appropriated fund balance in the past. So uh, we could ostensibly increase what we were using for appropriated fund balance if we wanted to look at potentially reducing some of the tax burden. 
So the current highlights haven't changed from the last one. We are still increasing our software purchases, our added district special ed placements, um, replacement of technology. Um, the one change under the equipment requests, I think I put pickup truck last time. Kyle uh, clarified that it was actually a box truck that we're replacing. I'm gonna make sure that we got that right. Um, so we still are still waiting for some things. We're still waiting for some additional uh, retirements to see if they come through. They have till March 1st. Um, health insurance rates are still not finalized yet. I've been told that they will be finalized until March 15th, a little later than I'd like, but still in time for um, the when I think we have March 21st is the date for the recommended um, board budget. Final state aid numbers, we should hopefully have by then as well, and um, I'm still working with Amanda on finalizing some special ed students. Uh, what I, so what I wanted to kind of really get into was the, uh, the capital work. You heard me mention, I think, at the last time, talking about transfer to capital, talking about capital reserves. So just to kind of back up, because I know um, we have some new board members, I was also not here last year, so I'm still trying to play catch up on some things that were done. So for the current summer, so summer of 23, we will be working on high school, middle school classrooms, renovation, and this is what they call phase two. And addition, additionally, they're going to be renovating the uh, cafeteria bathroom, which I know uh, had been on the list for a couple of years. Um, in addition to that, the bed at HVAC, that, had, that was a project that they had tried to start before I left, unfortunately, due to some unforeseen circumstances, it had not made it through SED, and I think there was an issue with the bidding as well. So that will also be done this summer, and what that is, is, is the air handler is being replaced um, in the gymnasium in Bennett. Currently, there is no air handler wor unit working, so um, the airflow is very minimal up there. So this will fix that. Um, so what currently was out to bid has been um, awarded, what's just come out of SED, these are all the newer projects. So Phoenician Woodstock um, will get classroom univents, uh, heating, cafeteria heating, gym heating, and floor tiles. So this is the project that was just um, brought out of SED um, and is currently out to bid. Um, I believe it's due back middle of March, I should have wrote that down. Um, but this work will then take place in the summer of 24. Again, the hope had been it would have been out of SED months ago um, and would have been able to bid and be done this summer. Unfortunately, SED doesn't always work as quickly as we would like them to, so now it's going to have to wait until summer of 24. In addition, there is some Phoenicia and Woodstock exterior doors and site work that's going to be done in the summer of 24. That one also just came out of SED and will be bid out soon. And then the Bennett and uh, high school, middle school generator and pads. The high school one has come out of SED and it has been approved. The Bennett one is still pending review and I have not gotten a response from SED as to why. So I will let you know. So those are our current projects. So as we look forward to what we are looking to do in the future, near future. Um, so in the transfer to capital, as I mentioned, I reduced that from 750 to 500. And the reason I did that is because we're gonna allocate that money specifically to support integrating the sixth graders into the middle school. So it's going to be, as um, Mr. Dodonna mentioned, the classroom furniture, the moving of you know, things to, to better align with you know, what, what the teachers need to support the sixth graders in the middle school. Um, in addition to that, um, we will be putting a proposition on the ballot to use the capital reserve. Uh, part of it is what we kind of called, well, let's face it. So part of it is to improve the electrical uh, infrastructure in the high school, um, do some additional high, uh, roof work over guidance, and then the phase three of the high school classroom, that understanding that over the last few years, phase one, phase two, phase three, and I I believe they always even talk of a phase four last year, but I wasn't here, so we'll have to, we'll have to figure that one out. Um, we also um, have talked about, and one thing that was brought up is a canopy over the loading dock and then over the cafeteria. Unfortunately, the tents, I don't know if they're really tents, whatever they're called, awnings that are over the cafeteria right now are really not very safe. One good windstorm and that thing is going. So we'd like to try to find something more permanent. Again, a permanent structure requires capital improvement requires SED and all of that. So um, we also put uh, electric bus infrastructure in there. 
um, understanding that it may not be something that we will do in the immediate future, but we know it's something that needs to be done. We did put in a request to EPA to extend the grant, given um, that we have, we're still not sure where we these, these infrastructure things can go, given that we don't have a lot of room. Um, they've been very accommodating, so I don't foresee a problem with that, and we are still working with CPL. We're still working with first students, so it's still going forward. Um, I just don't want it to go forward so quickly that then we have to back up because of something else that we're doing. Um, so the cap the, to use the capital reserve, like I said, does require voter approval, so it would be a proposition. However, it would not be additional tax burden to the taxpayers because it's money that we already have set aside. So some details of the capital work that we're looking at. So part of it, as I mentioned, was the phase in project that began in 2020 based on the recommendation of the facilities committee. So as you can see from the picture, there's talk of doing full depth asphalt replacement in the tennis court parking lot, um, including the curbs, the entrances, and uh, improve the drainage there as well. In addition, the high school middle school roof project that would repair and replace areas that were identified in a uh, roof scan in 2019, replacing the ADA lift that's located between the cafeteria and the library. I'm sure you've all seen that. Um, it also includes up to 10 high school, middle school classrooms, including the home and careers um, room, and it includes things such as abatement, patching and painting the walls, replacing casework, as you can see, it's a, it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, new flooring, um, rooftop exhaust fans, and then for the home and careers room, appliances, sinks, and, and additional casework. Uh, some of the less pretty work that needs to be done are um, removing transformers in the courtyard utility closet, is it, it, installing a new transformer. We have um, limited power at that end of the building. We um, are also looking to provide electrical. Kyle wrote this for me, so I apologize if it doesn't sound as cool. Provide electrical disconnects between each classroom window in the math and science wing. So in the future, if we need to put AC units, that are required for 504s and IEPs, we will have the power to be able to do that because currently we do not have the power to put any AC units in classrooms. Um, in addition, updating the um, breakers, the 600 amp main distribution panel that feeds the math and science wing and then also feeds the elevator. I hear that whenever the elevator goes, the lights go down because the elevator is going up, so we're trying to prevent that from happening. And then updating um, additional uh, branch panels in the um, math and science hallway as well. So as part of it, as part of this, oops, that's, as part of um, the capital reserve, we are also going to be looking at um, potentially um, additional work at the middle school. So some of it being additional active learning spaces and a big one being um, upgrading the middle school gym. Uh, the middle school gym has been on the list to be upgraded uh, and I can't remember, I believe it was budget that, that forced us not to be able to do it, um, I was it five or six years ago. Um, so this would be basically everything that I show there, the gym floor, uh, the basketball backboard, sound systems, painting the walls, just kind of an overall renovating the middle school gym, which is uh, very much needed. So just to kind of show you what we're looking at, back in 2011, we established a $5 million capital reserve. In 2014, the voters authorized us to use the reserve. So then in 2016, they authorized a second reserve, or another reserve, which then in 2019 we authorized us to use. So then in 2021, the voters established the $10 million reserve that we currently have funded that will be asking for um, the voters to um, authorize us to utilize that reserve fund. And that what we're also going to be asking is for authorization to establish an additional capital reserve because we can only fund that $10 million reserve an additional $1.2 million. Even if we pull money out, we could only put $1.2 million in it because it, can only, it has to cap at 10 even if you take something out of it. So um, by requesting an additional reserve, we can start building up more reserves so that as we look at the long-term plan, it will be less of an effect on the taxpayers. If we do need to borrow, we won't need to borrow as much. So with that, I am done. Any questions?
Do any of the trustees have questions for Ms. Clare? Trustee Wallace. It's not a question, it's a comment. I always find your work great. And uh, I think it should be said that, that uh, you're a wonderful steward of, of the funds and you make it very clear to me, I'm not a fi finance person and uh, you, you help me figure it out, you help me understand it, and I appreciate your work. Well, thank you. I think we would all second that. I <laughs> absolutely appreciate the way that you present the budget um, for those of us who are not financial wizards. Um, does anyone else have a question or comment? Ms. LeClaire, I'm wondering um, about the feasibility of getting us closer to um, a 2% tax cap, if there would be a way to do that without having an impact on programming. Okay. Is that something that you could think about? Absolutely. I will, as uh, for my next draft, I will bring you something that'll closer to the tax cap and I think I, I think I got some, I think I got some ideas. I think that it's been a really difficult year yes. for, uh, for most of our taxpayers, if not all. And uh, if there's a way that we can bring this down without affecting program, I, I would love to do that. Okay, I will absolutely do my best. Right. Thank you, I know you always do. <laughs> Anybody else? No? Right. Thank you so much, Ms. Claire. You're very welcome. Item 4.01, the Board of Education hereby accepts the minutes of February 7th, 2023. May I have a first, please? Trustee Wallace, second. Trustee Raimondo, questions or comments? All in favor? Yeah. Okay, that's unanimous, thank you. And uh, Ruby Gallen will be representing Noel Crandell tonight who could not attend our meeting. Hi, I'm Ruby Gallen, and I'll be filling in for Noelle tonight. Recently in student government, they held an association meeting with the middle school student government to connect on ideas and initiatives. The middle school representatives have been working on promoting mental health by encouraging the use of positive referrals, as well as hope to hold a school dance in the coming months. And tomorrow, the high school student government will be joining Bennett to celebrate their pink shirt day. Throughout the high school, some of, some of our Ontario athletes have made states. Congratulations. Harvard Model Congress is later this week, and our delegates are very excited to attend the conference. Our high school yearbook is halfway done, and the Talon released another excellent newspaper, which will be distributed throughout the district. The French Club is holding their talent show, and auditions are underway. And our senior class officers have been working hard on planning prom and hopefully a senior class trip. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Gallen. And uh, as we always tell Ms. Crendell, if you do not want to stay for the entirety of our meeting, you're welcome to, to leave whenever is comfortable for you. And the superintendent will report district news. Good evening. Um, I'm happy to report that uh, this year, Ulster Boces is going to offer an in-person secondary summer school located at Rondout High School. So it will be much uh, closer and more accessible for our students. Um, so the student dates will be the high school uh, July 20th to August 17th, Monday through Thursday, and middle school will be July 10th to August 15th, Monday through Thursday. Uh, the exact times for the day are not uh, finalized, but will likely be 7.30 to 12.30 or 8 to 12.00. Um, our transportation department will certainly be working on busing um, and we will get that information out as appropriate, but we wanted to let everybody know that we're really thrilled to have an in-person option. Uh, this evening we are recommending the calendar be approved for next year. Um, we do not have the graduation delineated on the calendar. The administrators are working with the building team and with families to identify the best date for our high school graduation. Um, with that uh, being an area of concern because the last day of Regents was, is on Wednesday and traditionally our graduations have been on Friday. So uh, we will let you know when that is determined. But in the meantime, we wanted to go ahead and approve the calendar um, outside of that because families can then begin to make their plans for next year. Um, we are also very happy to say that next year we will be able to plan for seven snow days to start. 
as we've mentioned previously, this is in part driven by the fact that it is a leap year, so there's an additional school day in February, and in the fall, Rosh Hashanah is not observed during the week, so we have a little more flexibility. Um, the board uh, has been um, certainly interested in hearing about our progress on dealing with vaping. We did have a large team meeting last week uh, to discuss vaping. One of the items on our agenda was the vape detectors, which are uh, indeed active again. They were inactive for several months. We reviewed the documentation that accompanies the detectors we have and compared the system recommended placement details with our site locations. Um, we have concerns with a location um, in a number of places, so our next step is to have an on-site meeting with the vendor that installed them. Uh, we did review the system capabilities for creating logs, and unfortunately, this system does not log information related to when the vapors send a notification or detect the presence of vape. The system doesn't have the capability to store historical data, so it's kind of a 24-hour running log, and then it starts over. I did ask uh, if that was something that was a setting, and uh, unfortunately, is it is not. That is just how the system is created. It is not intended to keep uh, running data for long periods of time. Uh, one of the other concerns that was related, that was raised, is also the, the amount of time it takes for the system to send an alert um, to an administrator. So response time is impacted in part by the ability of the system to generate that alert and get it to someone. Um, but also, uh, in, in terms of vaping as the issue it is, we are also in the process of setting up a meeting with LaSalle to find out what assistance they can provide in creating parent workshops related to vaping. So I would anticipate that this will continue to be a topic that we um, report on, uh, certainly probably at each meeting, if not each month. As Assistant Superintendent LeClaire noted, um, for our electric buses, there has been some recognition that the timelines associated with this grant are not actually viable. So they did establish a process to apply for extensions, which we have done. So once we receive a decision on that extension, we will share that with the board and the community. Um, while we are, again, happy to be receiving funding for something that will become a mandate, uh, we do believe that the required timelines are not realistic. And apparently we were not alone in that belief because they did pretty quickly create a system for extensions. Um, and finally, I just wanted to note, uh, as today we experienced a delay, this week appears to have the potential for several weather-related issues. So our principals are prepared, and at the elementary level, students will be bringing their Chromebooks home just in preparation. I kind of feel like if we're prepared, then we'll be okay. But please be aware that the possibility exists that we may have early dismissals or delays or we hope not for a remote day, but it could happen. That's all I have. Thank you, Superintendent McLaren. Does anyone have questions for the superintendent? Trustee Taylor? Hi, uh, with the alarms for the, the vaping, is it just a silent alarm that only goes to administrators or is it an audible alarm in the bathroom? It's not an alarm, it's a notification that arrives via email. Is there, maybe a little mean, but is there a way to have an audible, audible alarm in the bathroom that does not sound like a fire alarm or anything like that so that you're kind of caught red-handed like everybody in the area now knows there's something in the bathroom, but nothing like, sounds silly, nothing scary like a fire alarm, but like, hey, I see you. Like, I don't know, but we will certainly check that out. Yeah. That way at least it's like real time. If a teacher happens to be in the hallway. Other questions for the superintendent? Trustee Lynch, did you have your? Um, maybe just to follow on that question, thank you for your update, Superintendent McLaren. Is there anything else that the staff or administration would need to combat the issues that the schools are facing around um, safety writ large in the bathrooms from from substance abuse and or fights or other things that have been reported? Well, I would, I would knock on the wood back here, but we haven't had um, 
nearly the issues of fighting that were here last year, this year. Um, but we are you know, continuing to meet as a team and talk about what we can do. And that's also going to be part of the discussions as we're looking to um, build the, the expanded middle school. So we will continue to talk about that. And thank you for offering. Trustee Taylor. Hi, I don't know if this actually exists, but um, with the vape sensors, it's picking up, you know, a smell or like, you know, whatever it does to pick it up. Is there a, a, a noise allowance thing so that say there is a fight or some kind of commotion in the bathroom, it triggers something? They actually do pick up sound, which is sometimes not good because you have to adjust the levels of their sensitivity. Otherwise, they will be going off. There, there have been times, there have been days when our principals have received 60 to 70 notifications in a day. It, it becomes overwhelming and just unmanageable. So there's a lot of um, adjusting for the system that has to be done. Trustee Wallace. To be clear that 60 or 70 uh, alerts are not from vaping, but rather from uh, hijinks and other it, sounds. It could be um, a I vaping, it, well, it depends on what the vape detector is picking up. So it could be sounds, it could be um, other fumes, it could be any number of environmental things that it's picking up. So I think we're, we're really getting into all of the settings in the system and adjusting them, and it, it's, it's kind of a laborious process. But I think once we have the vendor out, that will be helpful as well. Trustee Taylor. Is there, when, you, when they get the alerts, is it just a blanket alert or does it differentiate between sound or a smell? It differentiates. So I, I think that was, that leads to my next question, which was, could you just, I, I know we've talked about this before, but could you clarify for us what the process looks like? Something is, something is detected in a bathroom and then what happens? Can you just follow the process for us of you know what that looks like? To, so an alert goes to a principal. Does it go anywhere else? Uh, I believe it also goes to our SRO. And then presumably, depending on where the location is and if anyone is anywhere near that location, and how quickly they received the alert, um, they may, if they if they happen to be right there, they can go into that location then there's a whole other set of factors that present themselves. If there are four students in that bathroom at that time and nobody has anything visible, it becomes a, a bigger issue. Um, or if by the time they arrive at the bathroom, there are no students there, that's another issue. I wonder, um, have we, have we ever, through our anonymous reporting system, and, and this, you don't have to answer this right now because I, I, I did not ask it ahead of time, but wondering if through our anonymous reporting system that the students have access to, if students have ever been encouraged to, um, to report vaping in the bathroom or to report that students are vaping during a certain time, if, if the system has ever been used that way. We could look into it, and obviously I wasn't here last year, so I can't answer for that right away, but if, if our illustrious district clerk might want to put that as an RFI, we could certainly ask. Yeah, and I, I can come back to it as an RFI and, and structure it a little bit more clear, um, just kind of thinking about ways that students can get involved because the students are certainly complaining about what they're seeing, um, and if there's a, an option for them to be part of the solution. Right. I think that would be terrific. Trustee Taylor? Obviously, there's no cameras in the bathroom, but are they at the entrance? Like, do the cameras see who's going in and out of the bathroom? There are certainly cameras uh, in the hallways, and I think you can see who has been in and out of the bathroom, but that doesn't actually provide you with proof of what a person may or may not have or have done. Is there a way, I know uh, for people that are maybe assigned hallway duty, if that's such a thing, is there a way for them to get the alerts so that they can be a, a quicker response? 
I think that's an, an administrative discussion. I don't know that that's necessarily um, within their authority. They don't have the authority to necessarily, um, you know, they, yeah, they can't search a student. They can't. They could bring a student down to the office, but what if there are two students in the bathroom? Bring them both. Uh, it it becomes unmanageable. I mean, we it, this is a certainly a situation that we're going to continue to work on, and the administration is um, definitely dedicated to addressing it. But it's not. It's often not as simple as you would like it to be. I mean, I think there are also, you know, questions about civil liberties and, you know, I think there's just a lot of stuff that can come up here that we just need to tread fairly carefully on because I certainly don't want to be, um, I don't want the district to be responsible for searching children who don't need to be searched. Um, that makes me super uncomfortable. So I'm sure that um, a lot of trustees would agree with me on that. I. This is obviously a, not just a hot button issue in our district, but from what I hear from educators and administrators around the country, it's an issue everywhere. Um, and it's an issue for our children that's going to be haunting them for many, many years. So I, I hope that there's a way that we can start to get a handle on this. And, and I hope also that New York State uses some of their big tobacco money um, to start fighting this in the same way that they fought against big tobacco. Um, they stu certainly have the resources and they certainly still have the funding. So uh, you know, I, I would hope that they step up pretty soon and start addressing vaping and giving us the support that we need as districts um, because they had a really successful program in Reality Check when they were fighting against um, actual cigarette smoking and I think that they're going to need to do something else soon and uh, support the districts in the work that we have to do. Does anybody else have questions for the superintendent? Does anyone have board district news? Trustee Lynch. Thank you. It's actually a good um, segue. Um, <laughs> I was able to attend the lobby day that um, the New York State School Board Association hosted last Wednesday in Albany. I was also joined by Trustee Wallace for um, half the time and um, really enjoyed the experience. Um, Trustee Bishop also committed to coming but was um, not well, so unable to join us. Um, just wanted to share that um, I met with the three representatives that, um, that have jurisdiction over our school district. That's Senator Obracker, uh, Senator Hinchy's office, and um, the Assemblywoman um, uh, Shrezda's office and, and the assembly member herself. And we, the top line news is that we actually have three champions um, in, in, uh, in Albany. And, and I think um, the most important uh, meeting was with Senator Obracker, who actually has um, committee work involving both, he's on the education committee, but he's also in the substance abuse um, and alcohol committee, um, or maybe it's called alcohol and substance abuse committee. And he talked about these issues that we were just talking about re related to vaping, and, and we talked about it being the issue of, you know, the Joe Camel issues of the 80s are, are coming back. Um, and so he saw it as both, a, obviously, a, a downstream but also an upstream issue, as he called it, and felt that we needed to do a lot more for mental health as well. Um, and when it comes to um, his support for issues related to our agenda regarding food security, uh, universal pre-K uh, and um, uh, and uh, the other was around um, I'm trying to think of oh we talked about the electric bus infrastructure uh, he was supportive of all of those issues um, so uh, it was a very actually long meeting with him and it was the first of the day so it w was off to a strong start um, both other members um, that I mentioned at the top were also supportive of our issues although our time was cut much shorter um, and I just wanted to yield um, to Senator, or Trustee Wallace, um, who's just been upgraded to Senator Wallace, um, <laughs> to see if you have anything to add from our other meetings. Uh, it was a, a very productive meeting, um, or meetings, uh, and I, I was definitely hopeful after them. Uh, and I'll add that uh, we did talk also about 
um, the, um, the the language in the law that prevents um, uh, unmarried spouses of um, of uh, firefighters and uh, first responders from receiving the school tax exemption. And um, currently, if you're a a, um, a a firefighter and you uh, die in the line of duty, your widow would um, or or widower would not be eligible for the tax exemption in, 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 if they remarried. So I did bring that up with uh, all with with two of those. Um, legislators, and they were both supportive of of looking at that anachronistic language. Um, other than that, um, uh, it was you know always good to be in the room where it happens. So I, I feel that we have friends and allies in, in Albany who are are really willing to help, and it's a relationship that we've started. Well, I would like to thank um, all three of you, because Trustee Bishop um, certainly had every intention of being there, for going. Um, it's my understanding that we were the only school district that actually sent Board of Education representatives to Albany that day in our area, and I, I really appreciate the amount of time that you took and the energy that it took to do that work. Um, I think it's really important, and I think it's really important to our students that we have a voice and a presence, so thank you for doing that and taking the time. Does anyone have questions for Sarah, uh, Trustee Lynch or Trustee Wallace? Okay, thank you. And who wants to report out for Cindy? Oh, Superintendent McLaren for Trustee Bishop, thank you. Good evening. Um, the Board Ad Hoc Committee met this afternoon to review the plans for our next World Cafe. The next meeting is virtual, but we'll continue the conversations from the January meeting. Uh, there will be additional information presented as follow-up from the last meeting as the participants had um, wanted some additional information to inform their discussion and then additional topics will be discussed and then shared out with the group. Um, the postcard that was mailed on behalf of the ad hoc committee to our community to invite responses to the survey as well as inform the community of the forum that will be held at the end of March was received uh, starting on February 10th. We are very happy to report that currently there are over 100 responses to the community survey. So we very much appreciate that the community is engaged in the conversation. The survey will remain open until March 10th, so I would ask that anyone who has not yet responded do so so that their voice can be part of our conversation. Um, the committee uh, in discussion did want to note that while we are discussing and asking for ideas of potential uses for the different district buildings were any of the buildings to be closed, there are some things that we wanted to ensure that the community understood we wouldn't be able to do. For example, because the Bennett Building is in the middle of our campus here in Boyceville, we would not necessarily be able to utilize that building for any non-district entities for safety and security reasons. Given the proximity to our students, um, we could not have people that are not part of our school community um, conducting business in a building in the middle of our campus. So we just kind of felt like that was important to note as people are contemplating the different uses that um, each building could be uh, if it were not a school building. Uh, I don't know if the ad hoc committee members who were at the meeting today have anything to add. I have a question. Um, on the survey, one of the options that it offers respondents is the possibility of using a building to, um, to house special education services. I wondered if at our next meeting we could get some more information about what that would look like and, and kind of clarify for the public what that actually means. Um, because I'm not even sure that we all understand what really that would look like and and what the benefits would be for the district um, in doing that. So I'm, I'm hoping that, if you don't mind, if we could get some information about that at our next meeting. I think that would be really helpful, at least for me, in understanding what the possibilities are. Anybody else have questions for the ad hoc committee? Nope. Okay. The board would like to acknowledge the publicly heard comments from the last meeting from Angela Spinelli and Neil Brownell.
Public and students may comment on any agenda or non-agenda item. The board appreciates hearing from the public, including students on any agenda or non-agenda item. Please understand that by our adopted parliamentary procedure, the board cannot engage in discussion or answer questions during public be heard. Please know that we hear you and take all of your comments into consideration. The board does reserve the right to correct any inaccuracies or misinformation during public be heard. Please limit your comments to three minutes, be civil, and do not name any particular individuals or promote any commercial ventures or products. People wishing to express individual student or personnel concerns can bring them to the superintendent's attention in private. Mr. Brownell. Mademoiselle, say testing. Can you hear me? Hello. Stand right there. Stand right there. Okay. Go kill those people. But there are millions of them. I don't care. You'll be one of them if you don't do it. What is the most efficient government? Well, just pick one of the governments that I spoke about last time around. At the very worst, you've got a handful of people. And then you might have just one person who's deciding who lives and who dies. This has been the norm throughout the, all of history and unfortunately still today in many, many parts of the world. But then some dreamers got together 247 years ago and they came up with the Constitution, a document that said we would no longer be terrorized by the 1%. And all of a sudden, everything exploded, and, and the, the dreamers took off. But now, the con artists in our government are telling you to teach our kids that the Constitution isn't important. If it's not important, then why did they have to decide that the Indians were not protected by the Constitution? Why did they have to decide that the slaves who were freed after the Civil War were not citizens? So that meant they weren't protected either. And right now, our government has decided that they can just say, hey, you're a terrorist, so you're not a citizen. You are not protected either. If the Constitution isn't important. Why do they want to get rid of it? It is the only thing that is protecting all of us, you, me, my wife, everyone, all the kids, from the tyranny that has lasted for thousands of years. Do not take them back to that tyranny. Thank you. Neil Brownell, the crazy inventor. Thank you and everybody make it home safe. Thank you, Mr. Brunel. Ms. Inge? Uh, Karen Inge, I'm here tonight to express my gratitude to the one trustee who listened to me along with others who spoke at the Board of Education meeting on January 24th. More importantly, thank you for hearing me. I watched as your voice and your ability to abstain and not vote in favor of the suppression of the community was very clearly almost taken from you. You did not cave to the pressure instilled on you by your fellow trustees. You stood in support of the child with her mom who found the courage to come out and speak that night. For that, I commend you. To those who complain about not being paid, who complain about the time and effort it takes to make a correct and right decision, who want recognition for what they do, who think the answer to communicating with those who vote them into their seats is to instill a massive regulation on our freedom to speak, and those with their chosen who think it is solely their responsibility to make decisions to the rest of us, I say congratulations. Congratulations on strong arming, intimidating, and suppressing your way to your decision. The board's gonna take a five minute break.
Ready to... Okay, item 11.01, the school calendar. The Board of Education hereby approves the school calendar for the 2023-2024 school year as attached. May I have a first, please? Trustee Raimondo. Second. Trustee Taylor. Questions or comments? Uh, the only comment I would have is um, I know you're going, I know that administration is going to be very mindful of that graduation issue and um, I would just encourage you to <laughs> to tread lightly because that's a tough one. All in favor? Okay, that's unanimous, thank you. The Board of Education hereby approves the overnight trip for Ryland Reynolds and Mercedes Cecilia Story to attend the NIF yeah. NISFAS. NISFAS Skiing Championships at Bristol Mountain in Canandaigua, New York on February 26th to 28th and pay all necessary fees. May I have a first, please? Trustee Wallace, second, Trustee Lynch. Questions or comments? Trustee Story? Um, in general, in the years past, we've gotten like a breakdown or, you know, monetary thing of what it has. Within the last couple of years, we've just gotten this, this you know, this memo that really doesn't give us any information of how much the trip's going to cost. I know we have to pay for it, but to me, this feels like we're giving them a blank check. I'd like to know, you know, it's it was gone back a while ago when we actually were given more information about the trips and stuff like that. We can certainly look back and see um, what you guys got in the past and resurrect that. That's fine. Um, I would just state that our district treasurer is very on top of it in terms of expenses and what is um, booked. But we can certainly look to do that. Uh, we can't do it for the, the trips for tonight, but we can mention that in the business office. Yep. Um, congratulations to Rylan and Mercedes, and best of luck to them. All in favor? Okay, that's unanimous, thank you. 11.03, the Board of Education hereby approves the overnight trip for Thomas Shields to attend the wrestling championships at the Times Union Center in Albany, New York on February 23 to 24 and pay all necessary fees. May I have a first, please? Trustee Wallace, second Trustee Raimondo. Um, questions or comments? Congratulations to Thomas and good luck. All in favor? Oh, okay. okay, that's unanimous, thank you. The Board of Education hereby approves the overnight trip for the senior class students to visit Camp Echo in Bloomingburg, New York on May 20th through 21st and pay all necessary fees. May I have a first? Trustee Raimondo, second Trustee Taylor. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Okay, that's unanimous, thank you. The Board hereby approves item numbers 12.02 to 12.08. Um, trustee, where am I? Oh, I'm sorry. 11.05, um, closing of the GSA Club and NHS financial accounts. Be it hereby resolved on recommendation by the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education of the Ontario Central School District approves the closing of the GSA Club and the National Honor Society Extra Classroom Club financial accounts due to the club's not funded raising in the future. May I have a first? Trustee Wallace. Second, Trustee Raimondo. Um, my only comment or question would be, this is easy to fix if they decide to do so in the future, yeah. Absolutely, and just to clarify, this is not a um, abolishment of the clubs, it's just closing of their financial account so that they don't have to, if they're not fundraising, the comptroller doesn't really want us to maintain um, um, a, essentially a bank account for them. If they decide in the future that there's something that they want and they want to fundraise, it's very simple to establish a, an account for them. Thank you, Superintendent. All in favor? That's unanimous, thank you. 
Item 12.01, the board hereby approves item numbers 12.02 to 12.08. Uh, Trustee Bishop has reviewed the Schedule U and it appears to be in order. May I have a first? Trustee Wallace, second Trustee Taylor, questions or comments? All in favor? That's unanimous, thank you. Item 13.01, the board hereby approves item numbers 13.02 to 13.03. May I have a first? Trustee Raimondo, second. Trustee Taylor, questions or comments? All those in favor? That's unanimous, thank you. Item 14.01, this is the first reading of policy 5661, District Health and Wellness Policy. I'd like to waive the first reading and ask all trustees to make sure that they look all of this over prior to our next meeting. Does anybody have any questions about what you've read so far? No. First reading of policy 7251, prohibition on administration of traditional standardized tests. Um, do you guys want to read this or do we want to waive the first reading and come back to it at the next meeting for finalization? Does anybody have questions while we're here for the policy committee? No, okay. Uh, let's see. Does any of the committee members have anything to report? Um, Trustee Lynch already reported out for legislative action, any communications facilities, audit. Trustee Story. Um, facilities, we met last week. We did our middle school and high school walkthrough and the rest of our committee uh, was, uh, Ms. McClare did it in her budget presentation to us, so there's no need for me to butcher it even further. Anyone else? Communications committee did just have um, some terrific work done on our board corner for um, the newest newsletter that's going out with help from our BOCES partners. Did you guys want to elaborate on that at all or um, the public should look for that in the next newsletter? There's lots of information from the Board of Education there which I think is um, terrific work on the part of the communications committee. Does the board have any old business? Trustee Taylor. Hi, um, our district is going to be um, embarking on a very serious and long journey. And I would like to invite the PTA members to elect a representative to come to every single meeting and to take part in these meetings. And they can uh, comment, just listen, but then go back to their constituents and tell them what's going on and maybe encourage other members to come in and sit on our meetings also. Currently we are talking to an empty auditorium and there are groups in our community that are for or against any changes that are taking place and going to happen and we have no one here to talk about anything. So if it means that much to people, whether for or against, then they should be in these seats and taking part in these meetings. Thank you, Trustee Taylor. Any other old business? Any new business? Um, I, I don't know if this is the appropriate place for it, but I would like to clarify that um, at our last meeting, we did have a question about whether or not a trustee could abstain from a vote, and that was not about um, restricting anyone's freedom of speech. That was on advice from our attorneys. We are in the process of clarifying what New York State recognizes as a legal reason for abstention, and that information will be disseminated to all board members um, and can be available on board docs as well so that the public is clear about 
a yes vote, a no vote, and an abstention, and what they actually mean and what the criteria is according to New York State. Any other new business? Okay, do we have any RFIs? Just my RFI. I think, do, we, do you need any clarity on that? Amanda, did you? Trustee Taylor. Um, I know you said the, the company for the vaping sensors is coming out. Is there like an update uh, to the system that they have, uh, either if it's a small purchase or just included in our original purchase price to see if the update would make them work more efficiently? I believe we asked and they did have the latest, I'm gonna use the wrong word, patch um, already installed. Um, the RFI I had, Amanda, was uh, was regarding um, our anonymous reporting system that the students have access to and whether or not it could be modified to allow them to discuss vaping um, and, to, uh, and, and also whether or not it's being actually utilized. I think this is not part of the RFI, but I do think that we talked about having uh, Mr. Harkin come in and talk about the work he's doing, and I'd love to get that scheduled sometime in the next couple of meetings. Yeah, is that, do you want that as an RFI, do you think that's best? Uh, the second RFI would be regarding the use of um, one of the additional properties as special education programming and what that would look like, what the possible benefits are for the district and any potential financial um, cost savings or additions that it might incur. Anyone else? Just me with all the, okay. The next meeting is March 7th, 2023 at the Woodstock Elementary School. Uh, Trustee Story would like to adjourn the meeting. She's the first, second. Trustee Taylor, questions or comments? All in favor? Thank you.